What if you've already got the melodic of basics and you're still not sounding as good as you could? It could be because you're missing some inside knowledge. Well, I'm gonna share some of that knowledge with you in these 10 tips for pro melodica players. Number one is copying musicians that are better than you. This means putting away the sheet music and going directly to the recordings. It's about developing your ears, listening carefully to what you're hearing and working out how to replicate it in every detail. You don't have to go to a melodica recording for this. It can be an instrument or any singer whose sound you're attracted to. Find someone that inspires you. Then start with just one phrase from that track and learn to play it exactly as you hear it. There's a feature on YouTube that allows you to slow down the playback to half or a quarter. And that's when you really start to hear some subtle and interesting things that give them their unique sound. These things are normally so subtle that without careful listening, you wouldn't notice them at all. That's exactly how I learned to play in the traditional Irish style. I found one concertina player whose style really spoke to me and I copied him in every detail on the melodica. It doesn't mean I play exactly like him now, but I have incorporated all the bits I like from his playing. When you're listening in minute detail, you're going to discover quite a few techniques used by your favourite musicians. Let's start with tip number two, shaping a note. There's many ways to shape a note with dynamics or volume, which you can influence by the amount of air you use. Let's take a long note. If you play it on the melodica without any shaping, it sounds like this. But what I've learned, especially from singers, is the importance of the beginning and ending of a note. Listen to the difference when I play the same note, but this time beginning it really quietly, gradually ramping up the volume and then taking it back down again as it ends. What we're doing here is controlling the flow of the breath to influence the dynamics. It's something that gets easier to do the more you practice until eventually it just becomes natural. Tip number three is something you hear a lot in singing. It's called vibrato, that wobbly sound that adds color and expression. There's as many styles and intensities of vibrato as there are singers, but I find the best one that works for melodica is something called stomach vibrato. It's where you use short, sharp stomach contractions to create little bursts of air. You can practice this without the instrument first. With some air in your lungs, try drawing the stomach in and up in one quick, sharp movement. Now try putting your hand on the stomach so you can feel it and put the other hand in front of your mouth to check that the movement is expelling air from the lungs. So this is the correct movement, but in a much exaggerated form. Now we'll try doing it with the melodica with the key pressed down. This time it's much more subtle, just a tiny stomach movement that pushes air out into the instrument to make a sound. And to do vibrato, you play a normal note and you add these air bursts. It's just a subtle movement now, like an inner stomach wobble that you can't see. Now we can combine shaping the sound, which we learned before, with vibrato. So start very quietly. And when the volume builds, you can gently add some vibrato. And then to end the note, reduce both the airflow and the vibrato together as the sound dies away.
Like all of these techniques, practice makes perfect. You practice in order to make it automatic. And after a while, you do it without thinking. The fourth tip is a great technique to have. It's called a cut, and it's where you play a very quick note just before the main note. It's similar to the grace note in classical music, but it's quicker and a little bit more percussive. It's normally a tone or a semitone above, but it can be any note you want, so try different ones and see what works for you. You can use it at the beginning of a note, or once or twice during a long note. It should be very quick, just a tap of the key, and it should be completely separate from the main note. And this leads us to tip number five, which is called a tap. It's similar to the cut, but instead of playing a quick note above the main note, you play a note below. You can use a combination of taps and cuts to play a note in any way. See what fits best for your style and the music you're playing. It can give your sound some real spice. And you'll hear this in a variety of genres, Celtic, jazz, many Eastern styles, and also in pop music. So play around with taps and cuts in different combinations to get a variety of effects. <laughs> Tip six is a technique I learned from traditional Irish music, and it's what they call a triplet. It's not a real triplet in the classical sense, more like two semiquavers and a quaver played in rapid succession. We play these with a technique called tonguing, and it's where you leave your finger down on a note and re-trigger it by making sounds in the mouth. The sounds I use are t and k. It's as if you're just starting to say a word and you suddenly stop yourself. Try making these sounds and see where they come from in the mouth. You'll notice t is made with the tongue at the front of the mouth and k is made further back. A triplet uses the sounds t, k, t. So practice that and see how fast you can get it. T, k, t. 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 And then try it on the melodica with the key pressed down. Tip number seven is using the tonguing which you've just learned, but applying it to chords. It's the same principle as before. Repeat the alternating sounds t, k, t, k. And you do this as many times as you want and in any rhythm. You get what I mean, you can be really creative here and you can emphasize some of the chords to make interesting rhythmic patterns. Tip number eight is a really lovely one, and it can make a huge difference to your playing if you get it right. It's called ghost notes. When I was listening to an Indian flute player at half speed recently, I realized that so many of the notes were barely audible. They just added to the ambience and really helped create that delicate, ethereal sound. Ghost notes can sound great at the end of a phrase. Let's start with a short phrase. It sounds fine, but what if I were to add a couple of ghost notes at the end? Here's the same phrase with those two extra notes at the end, played really quietly. The two last notes add a little tail to the phrase. They're much quieter than the main notes, and the only way to do this is by playing them as you taper off the breath. You can practice just the last note of the phrase with the tail at full volume, and then really backing off the airflow for the tail notes. Trust your ears to get the right volume here. You should hardly hear the tail at all. Tip number nine has been the single most beneficial thing in my melodica playing. And it's based on the concept of less is more. Let's say you want to play a note. What do you do? You choose a finger, you choose a key, and you press that key with your finger. 
This works fine for slow playing, but as soon as you need to play something more complex, or use some of the techniques I've been talking about, like cuts, taps, or ghost notes, something else becomes really crucial. And that's how you're playing the note. How efficient is that finger movement as it presses the key? And how relaxed is your hand as you play it? We're opening up a whole new dimension here. Becoming aware of this process, which we're not normally aware of, is what I consider the secret to becoming a really good player. I'll show you a technique you can use to develop this. Place your hand on the keyboard so each finger is on a key. And finger by finger, go through this process. First, become aware of the key underneath the fingertip. If you can't feel the key, move the finger slightly until you can feel it. Use the minimal effort needed to drop the weight of the finger into the key until you can feel it stop at the key bed. Then, allow the spring of the key to gently take your finger back up. It's a tiny movement, just a few millimetres. Try it with every finger. This is pressing a key with minimal effort. It can be quite a revelation when you first do this and see just how little effort it takes to press a key. The hardest thing about this is how unfamiliar it feels. It feels awkward and you're going to want to go back to your familiar way of playing. So you have to stick with it with slow practice. Be willing to go to an unfamiliar place again and again until eventually it feels natural. Playing with minimal effort means that your hand and body can stay relaxed and you need this relaxation to play complex music with ease. When you're playing with less tension, you'll also notice an improvement in the quality of the sound you're making. It becomes more resonant and bell-like. This is how you get a good melodica tone. And finally, tip number 10 is something you may have seen some melodica players doing, and that's playing with both hands in the upright position. This is something I've only started doing for this video, but already I love how it can really make the instrument sound full. I do it while sitting down with a melodica resting on my lap, so my right hand is in the normal playing position and I extend my left arm so the left hand is over the black keys and I keep the instrument steady with the left hand thumb. If you're trying this out for the first time, it's a great opportunity to put the minimal effort principle into practice right from the start and that's exactly how I'm learning it. Well, I hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments what techniques you'll be using from this, or if you have any modifications, or your own ways of getting a unique sound. If you're still a beginner and not quite ready for these advanced techniques, I hope it gives you some inspiration for what you'll be able to do in the future. And for you guys, I suggest watching my free lessons on YouTube, or get a copy of my book to get started. That's all for now. Have fun with your playing, and I'll see you next time.